My love for Steam Next Fest is well documented. Being able to scroll through the seemingly endless levels of demos and Steam for upcoming titles is both amazing and daunting at the same time. With only a week in which to play them, although many keep their demos life for longer, selecting and playing games before they're taken down is a challenge to say the least. I've had some great experiences, most recently with the Alters and Super Fantasy Kingdom, but for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Meaning for every good one that you pick out, there is likely a bad one. I have a selection of games that I tried and was left feeling disappointed and confused in some cases. To be clear, this list is not a these games are trash list. It is that these games just didn't resonate with me and either need more work ahead of release or are unlikely to ever really appear on my radar for various other reasons. Of course, you're completely free to disagree with me in the comments below, so let us begin with game number one. I went into this one thinking that I was highly likely to be playing some sort of Project Zomboid style game. Whilst there are no zombies present in this, I found the game to just be uninteresting. I was left wondering whether it was me doing something wrong at some stages. The lack of a tutorial didn't help, and perhaps if I had persisted for long enough maybe I would have got to the point of the game, but in the time that I spent with it I was really disappointed with this. The day and night cycles were too fast, and despite almost enforcing the idea that this game was built for controller, the controls just felt janky and unintuitive. The inventory system was poor, not helped by the unintuitive button mappings, and all in all, I just found myself puzzled as to what I was even doing. I went exploring and came across some NPCs who told me that I needed to get a certain number of coins to afford petrol for the generator back at the homestead that I shared with this foul-mouthed neighbour of mine, and in the end, I got so bored of his attitude that I killed him, hoping that he would have some coin on him, in, or coin in his house perhaps, and I could use that to buy the fuel, but to no avail. I would say though that I did enjoy the art style and games like this are ones that appeal to me and it is entirely possible that I didn't get all that far in this game and perhaps the game opens up more had I have done so. But first impressions are key with these sorts of things and this game to me clearly needs a lot of work. I don't believe that this game is beyond saving, I think the bones of the game are there but there are many, many changes that need to be made for this one to reappear on my wish list. A relaxing farming game, allowing you to create farms anywhere in the world thanks to real world map data? Sign me up! Even though Farm Manager is a good game, it has never really captured me, so I thought there was definitely room in my library for a farm management game where I can grow and sell crops and produce. Unfortunately, what I played was so bare, it would have made a naked mole rat feel overdressed. The UI was buggy, the whole process of planting, growing and selling crops was so incredibly simplistic that it left me thinking that I was just playing an Excel spreadsheet with a fancy UI on it. Picking the right times to plant and harvest, ensuring the fields have the right nutrients in them and having the right machinery to do the job was pretty much all there is to it. There was the option to do the fields manually, but I'll be honest, I didn't really want to try that. Graphically, it's not particularly pleasing, and again, I would use the word simplistic here. The colour palette is a bit of an eyesore, and there is no real immersion here whatsoever. The only thing that sort of has you immersed, and I use that sentence lightly, is when you zoom in on your farmyard. You're transported into a fully rendered farmyard where your vehicles, machinery, and storehouses are. Fans of the aforementioned farm manager games will raise an eyebrow at this one, as many of the assets look remarkably similar here. But that is where the immersion lives and dies. I do not think that this one is likely to be at the top of too many wish lists, unfortunately, and overall I would say this one was definitely a letdown for me. I'm unsure whether or not this was just such an early demo that the gameplay was not fully fleshed out or whether this was the intended design of the game. Either way, what I played was possibly the most casual game I have ever played in that there was no difficulty. It was pure point and click. You click on your patrons, they are slung a drink across the room and you get coins as they drink. You keep doing that and eventually they start to throw up. You click on the sick, you clean it up. You buy more tables and decorations to invite more people. You click to give drinks. You buy machines to automate certain things. You click some more. You expand and you get bigger. You click on them some more. And that is it. I'm not joking. That is all this game is. Now games don't have to have a high skill ceiling, nor do they have to have a deep and complex management system to be fun. Tavern and Blacksmith Master are two examples of games that are fairly simplistic, but are fun enough to watch and build that you can waste away hours but they do at least have a layer of player choice where you decide how to spend your money and in what area. There is a progression system where you can unlock more and attract higher caliber guests in those games. Yes, it's easy and yes, it's simplistic, but you do at least feel like it is your creation and that it is you that are reaping the rewards of your own decisions. In this, I just feel like I'm along for the ride. Perhaps there is more to come in the main game, but this game would have to have at least some level of depth for me to even consider giving this one another go. 
I was juggling whether or not to include this one on this list because I actually did enjoy myself in this demo to a point. This game is a top-down shooter set in a zombie-ridden world full of dangers and other players. It would appear there is a sensible amount of depth to the game with character progression, classes and a good array of weapons and equipment to play around with, with the former having plenty of upgrades as well. Then there are the game modes. Raid seems to be a take on the extraction genre, as you look to collect loot and get out of the zone before you are killed by a zombie or another player. Squad combat has you in teams of four fighting over control points in a domination style mode, and then you've got normal deathmatch, 1v1 duels and a co-op horde mode. In the demo, I queued into Deathmatch, and whilst one or two players did pop in and out, it seemed to be mostly bots that I was playing against. The game itself ran okay. I had plenty of periods of frame drops, but it was playable enough to be just about enjoyable. I managed to get a couple of kills on bots and players alike, and overall, it was reasonably fun tracking down players and bots based on the sound of the gunfire. So then, you might be asking, after a seemingly positive experience, why am I including it on this list? Well, there are two main reasons. As mentioned, the game's performance left a lot to be desired. Whilst it was playable, to make this an overall good experience, the performance will need to be drastically better than what I experienced in this demo. Secondly, and this one may be a little unfair to judge right now, I am worried about the longevity of this game. The game on the surface has plenty going for it, but in reality, I don't think it's enough to keep gamers' attention for too long. Unless the PvP combat is really fun and engaging, and it's difficult to tell from the demo because the player count was so low, I do see gamers turning their back on this game as it's clearly meant and designed to be a PvP-style game, and if you're just playing against AI bots that are backfilling all the games, I'm not sure how long that's going to last. That may be a harsh criticism right now, and I'm not sure what they can realistically do to change that, but they need to find a hook, a reason to keep players coming back for match after match so that the player count stays high, and then they must ensure that the in-game experience is good enough for players to have fun. Out of every game in this list, this is the game that I feel right now has the best base to grow from and has the best chance of being a successful game. Time will tell. I left the most disappointing one for last. Endzone 2, a sequel to the 2021 Endzone A World Apart, left me feeling the most confused and lost and generally empty out of any Steam game that I played during Nextfest. Perhaps this is due to expectation levels. Having not played the first but being aware of the game and its general feeling amongst the community, I was looking forward to playing this as no doubt it would improve in the areas that it needed to from the first game. From what I read about the first game, the tutorial in the second is equally long and tedious in this, but overall my criticisms lay on a much deeper level than just an elongated walkthrough. For me, this game can be summed up in one simple word. Boring. At no point throughout my time with this game did I feel involved or engrossed in what was in front of me. Graphically, it's fine, nothing particularly special about it. Mechanics-wise, everything is functional and seems to work and make sense, and there are plenty of buildings and things to keep track of, and seemingly, it ticks all the boxes for a city builder. But there is just nothing going on here. There is no atmosphere in this game. There is no life to be seen within the city. I make no apologies for banging on about this in quite a few of my videos, but when you play city builders or sim games, one of the prerequisites to these types of games is that you must feel part of your creation. You must feel that what you are doing is having an impact, that it has meaning, and that you are able to see your creation come to life in some way, shape, or form. And I think that is incredibly important. Manor Lords, where you can see all of your townsfolk doing things, and going about their daily lives in a town that you created is probably one of the most engrossing games and is arguably the yardstick now for which all games can be measured against from that point of view. But I could name tons of games that showcase people taking resources to and from places where you can see workers' jobs and tasks animated to a good level. Even something simple as workers going to build a building that you have just plopped down. This game has precisely none of that, or where it does, it just doesn't look right. Your people just run around aimlessly, it seems, and overall, it just feels completely devoid of life. Even the city planning aspect of it is really rough. I understand that it's meant to be effectively a shanty town, but not being able to really design a neat road network, for example, because your buildings all have roads coming out of each other in different spots, is at times really frustrating. Now, you could make the case for saying that, well, embrace the randomness of the town creation then. It is supposed to be a bit slapdash in a world such as this. But visually, it just looks so uninspiring. Having just random buildings in seemingly random places with the only thing that links them together is a crazy paving style road network and an AOE effect around the building where it provides buffs to other buildings of similar types. It just doesn't work for me. All in all, I just never felt like anything I was doing was meaningful or impactful. This game does absolutely nothing new in the genre and does everything seemingly on an incredibly basic level. 
There are so many better examples of city builders where your creations have meaning, the layout has meaning, and it has a real impact. When you create something, you want to be given a visual indication as well as the obvious data indications in the background that what you're doing is right or wrong. The other very similar looking game, Surviving the Aftermath, is another that I've not played, and I'll be really curious to see how the game plays compared to this one, given that they are both very similar in terms of their setting and premise. So overall, I was really, really disappointed with this game. I had higher hopes for this. I really felt like being the second game that there would be some serious strides made, but it feels very far along the development path with the game coming out in Q3 of this year. So I would be very surprised if they were able to make any significant changes to cater to what I'm looking for. So this one is a very hard pass for me. But of course, these are just my humble opinions. There will be people out there who wholeheartedly disagree with me, and that is absolutely fine to do so. There are often times where saying a good game is good or bad, and it's purely subjective, meaning what I say doesn't mean that somebody else won't absolutely love any or all of the games that I've mentioned in this video. But I would love to hear your thoughts on these games. If you've played any of them, perhaps there were others during Nextfest that you've played and ended up very disappointed in, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.